In the last video, we have seen that there are certain experimental observations that lead us to abandon the static lattice model. So the atoms should be vibrating around their equilibrium uh, positions, which are the lattice sites. And what would drive these oscillations is basically the thermal energy. And uh, acoustic properties, optical properties and thermal properties of the crystals will be influenced by these uh, lattice vibrations. Now, the vibration uh, can be treated as an elastic uh, vibration. So we can talk, think about the bonds between atoms to be elastic uh, springs as long as the displacements from equilibrium positions uh, are small. So uh, the atoms are interconnected by elastic springs and if you have an elastic spring, the restoring force will obey Hooke's law. The, for, uh, the restoring force will be equal to minus a spring constant times the displacement from equilibrium, which will lead to a potential energy 1 half kx squared. And that's called the harmonic approximation. So basically, we are considering atoms in the lattice as being interconnected by elastic springs. Okay, so if you look at such a model, for example, if you have a square lattice, you can see here uh, all the atoms are connected by these elastic springs. So a problem like this in classical mechanics uh, would give us uh, vibrational modes of oscillation. And uh, we know that this will be a linear superposition of a set of normal or eigen modes uh, of oscillation. So uh, our task would be to determine uh, what these eigenmodes are. All right, so uh, let's start with normal modes of a one-dimensional monatomic Bravais lattice. So as you can see here, we have uh, a set of atoms on a line and all atoms are interconnected by springs. So if I concentrate on the end atom, I see that it is displaced from its equilibrium position and A, which is here, by an amount UN. And for the N minus 1 atom, which is uh, connected to the other side of the less left spring, that is uh, displaced from its equilibrium position UN minus 1. And to the right, we have the N plus 1 atom, which is uh, normally at the lattice site M plus 1A position is actually displaced from this position by an amount U N plus 1. So we have the right side and the left side of the ant atom uh, that is contributing to the oscillation uh, of the ant atom. So A is what we call the equilibrium distance between atoms, so that would be our lattice constant. And U sub N is the displacement of the ant atom from its equilibrium position. Okay, so what kind of uh, waves uh, can travel through such a um, one-dimensional Bravais lattice? This could be representing a plane wave moving in the 100, 110 or 111 direction of a cubic lattice where atomic planes move in phase parallel or perpendicular to K. So you can see here, if I look at a plane of atoms that are on a, uh, falling on a line and uh, they are uh, basically leaving their equilibrium positions, the equilibrium positions are at a distance, uh, you can see here, uh, A. So uh, the atoms at the left hand side are uh, at their equilibrium positions. And then we can see that the second set of atoms uh, have left their equilibrium positions, have been displaced by a certain amount, and the third set of atoms uh, have also left their equilibrium positions, and fourth set have left their equilibrium positions. So what we see is that we have a wave that is traveling to the right, it's a plane wave, and because the displacement of the atoms from their equilibrium positions uh, are parallel, to the uh, wave vector k, this is a longitudinal wave. On the other hand, we could have uh, for a one-dimensional uh, Bravais lattice, all the atoms uh, moving perpendicular to the uh, k vector, which would represent a transverse wave. So you would see that 
these atoms are displaced from their equilibrium positions perpendicular to the k vector. So that would be the transverse wave. So we have two possible scenarios here. So uh, if I want to write the force, the net force acting on the uh, ant atom here, uh, it's, it is basically interacting with the, right, the atom to the right and the atom to the left and uh, the force on the atom will be given by uh, the restoring force uh, due to Hooke's law. So if I call the spring constant C here, so I have a spring constant C for all uh, elastic springs, then I can see that uh, if I look at the displacement of the ant atom, so it's displaced by an amount u n to the right, so that would compress the spring, so there would be a restoring force minus c u n, but the, the atom to the right is also displaced from its equilibrium position by an amount u n plus 1, so that would be stretching the spring, causing a restoring force to the ant atom to the right, so that would be c u n plus 1. So CUN plus 1 minus CUN would be the force acting on the ant atom due to the elastic spring uh, to its right. Now, as I said, it is co compressed by UN, stretched by UN plus 1. It, the same thing would happen if I look at the left hand side. Uh, I would see that if the n minus 1 atom moves to the right, it would be compressing the spring that would push the n atom to the right, so that would be Cu n minus 1, but uh, the motion of the n atom to the right would be stretching the spring uh, to the right, so that would cause a restoring force to the left minus Cu n. So if I consider these two contributions, the net force acting on the n uh, atom would be C U N plus 1 plus U N minus 1 minus 2 U N. So C is my uh, elastic spring constant. So if I have the situation U N plus 1 minus U N is negative, so U N is displaced, uh, ant atom is displaced more than the N plus 1 atom, the net effect uh, would be a compression that would give me a negative force contribution on the ant atom. So similarly, we can write the harmonic potential energy 1 over 2 C n equals 1 to uh, capital N minus 1 because we're counting the springs. We have uh, n capital N minus 1 springs here. So uh, un plus 1 minus un squared. So for each spring, we have to write uh, this. So capital N is number of atoms that's adding up contributions from all springs, so n runs from 1 to capital N minus 1. So we have the net force acting on the ant atom, considering only uh, interactions with nearest neighbors, and we have the potential energies, total potential energy stored in the lattice. Then the equation of motion would be given by Newton's second law, mass times acceleration m d square u n d t square the net force acting on the ant atom is the spring constant c u n plus 1 plus u n minus 1 minus 2 u n so that is the net force so uh, if we generalize this so if we consider uh, the ant atom uh, interacting with uh, not only nearest neighbors but other neighbors then we would have a different spring constant, Cp, uh, and we would go through all possibilities, Un plus P minus Un, uh, Cp, would give us the net force acting on the atom, and because the atoms to the right and the atoms to the left would give me a symmetric situation, the spring constants Cp would be equal to C minus P. So ba basically this is the case uh, when I have left the nearest neighbor approximation. So this is giving me all neighbors, uh, all neighbor interactions included. Okay, now we have this task to solve this differential equation and in order to solve a differential equation we usually need uh, boundary conditions. 
So the, the choice of boundary conditions we have here is called the born von Karman periodic boundary condition. So the number of atoms is very big. We don't care what happens at the end, so we put an and uh, condition, which is saying that the displacement of the zeroth atom and the displacement of the and atom are the same. Or in other words, we basically connect the zeroth atom and the and atom so that they have the same displacements. And the same is applied to the and atom. The displacement of the and atom is displacement of the capital N minus and atom. So that is what we call Born von Karman periodic boundary condition. So with this boundary condition, we have a set of capital N equations because for each atom we have to write this equation from uh, 1 to capital N and uh, they will be coupled differential equations because they are coupled by the displacements. Uh, for example, U uh, the UN equation is coupled to the M plus 1 and M minus 1 equation. Uh, so these equations should be solved simultaneously with the appropriate boundary conditions. So the once again our choice of the boundary condition is born von Karman periodic boundary condition which sets the displacement of the ant atom to be equal to the capital N minus ant atom or uh, basically saying that the ant points are connected. Okay so uh, we have talked about the lattice vibrations the lattice uh, the atoms are leaving their equilibrium positions because we are modeling them as being interconnected by elastic springs uh, where they where each spring obeys a hooke's law and um, to solve the total system the modes the vibrational modes of the total system from classical mechanics we we know that uh, each vibrational mode will be a linear superposition of some normal or eigen modes and um, we started out with the one-dimensional monatomic Bravais lattice and we have seen that this could be a longitudinal or transverse wave traveling through this set of uh, atoms uh, on, a, on a line and uh, if you write down the net force acting on the ant atom due to the two elastic springs it is connected to one to the right and one to the left uh, we have to consider the effect of displacing the ant atom to the right on the right spring and left spring. On the right spring, uh, it's going to compress the spring and therefore it will give me a negative force on the ant atom. On the left spring, it will be stretching the spring and that will give me also a negative force, uh, forcing it to go back to its equilibrium position. So I will obtain minus CUN. And for the n plus 1 and n minus 1 atoms, that gives me a positive contribution. Uh, and we can write the harmonic potential energy of the uh, lattice by considering the all springs uh, present in the system. And we can write down the equation of motion for the nth atom. And we can generalize this equation of motion taking into account all neighboring interactions, uh, where we have to note that the spring constants uh, to the right and to the left interact for interactions with the atoms to the right or to the left are going to be symmetric and to solve this set of differential equations we have capital and differential equations that are coupled we need also a, a boundary condition the choice that we go with is the born von Karman periodic boundary condition which sets the displacement of ant atom equal to capital n minus ant atom